and welcome to Finding Love. This is Nancy Bruce. It is great to be back. Okay, so it's for today. Let's talk about dating younger men. Uh, let's talk about what that means when you're in the middle of life. And a uh, few people have written in and, to- and, and asked me to, to chat about this. And so dating younger men, first of all, let me give you my short answer. The short answer is absolutely go for it. There is no reason not to date outside of your preconceived age range. And this is the thing about having a lot of preconceived parameters around dating. You know, you really are cutting yourself off at the knees when you say, well, he has to be a certain age and he has to live within 20 miles of where I live and he has to um, look a certain way or do this for a living or have have kids or no kids, divorced, never been married. All of these prerequisites that you you think are so important. Believe me when I tell you they go right out the window when you meet the right person. And I think that we all know that in our heart of hearts, but when you're dating again after not having dated for maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 years, or maybe you just got out of a really long relationship, you're super out of practice, you're not even sure what you want, don't have a knee-jerk reaction and say, well, I could never date somebody who's more than five years younger than me or 10 years younger, or I could never date somebody who's more than 10 years older than I am. I, I had a one friend who, when she was putting together her dating profile, she, in terms of age, when it, the, the question with age range, she put two years younger and two years older. And that was it. Two years younger, two years on either side of her age. And I'm like, okay, why don't you just put whatever astrological sign you'd like him to be while you're at it? I mean, all of these rules and prerequisites are unnecessary. And all they're going to do is make sure that you are seeing fewer and fewer profiles of eligible men. So you're really decreasing the dating pool right off the bat, right out of the gate, you're decreasing your dating pool. So dating younger men, my, my, my question is why not? You know, what, what, who cares? You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go so far as to say age is a number. You know, people like to say that. I think age is more than a number. I think age is also a a, a cultural marker, right? If you're of a certain generation, you have experience with some kind, this, you know, maybe the same kinds of music, you can reference the same kind of cultural moments. Um, so there is something to be said for dating someone who's not, you know, generations younger than you. But in terms of, you know, a few years or even a dozen years on either side of your age, I think it's totally fine and totally great. I have a friend, her name is Deb. And she is in her 60s and she is quite fabulous in every way. And she is dating again. She is is recently divorced and she started dating again. And she told me, she's like, yeah, you'd be shocked that the men on these dating apps who are really interested, genuinely interested in older women. And to which I say, great. You know, here's a few caveats for those of you who are who are seriously asking the question, you know, do you think it's okay? It, it you know, what 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 should I how should I approach this? Here's uh, here's what I would say and I would really say this for any kind of dating in whatever age range or whatever context. Communication is key, right? Make sure that you are uh, both looking for the same thing and that you are both fully aware. I would say personally I would say never lie about your age never lie about your age. Oh my gosh. My older sister used to lie about her age constantly. In fact, one of her husbands, she was married, I think like four times. One of her husbands didn't ever know how old she was because she, she shaved three years off her age all the time. And I mean, at at a certain point, I didn't even know how old she was. My mother had a friend like that too, a woman named Martha. And she was so funny about her age and she would shave 10 years off. And she, so she pretended that she was the same age as my mother and my mother was 10 years younger. And my mother would say, Martha, I know how old you are. Stop saying that you're my age. It's just funny. You know, it's not, and it's, it's funny and it's not funny because I think as women, there's such a weird, you know, troubling stigma around aging. It is something I personally do not buy into. I hope you don't either. Certainly if you're dating in the middle of life, that is the last thing you need to be worried about your age. You, you are the age you are, and it's a fabulous age to be. So 
if I could wave a magic wand and make it easier for for all of you, I wish I could because it's true that we are we are enmeshed in a in a youth is beauty kind of cultural dialogue. Well, let's try for, for the sake of this conversation, let's put that aside and pretend like we don't care about that and I hope you don't. But dating younger men is, you know, perfectly great as long as everybody is on the same page, as long as everybody is clear about what they want and what they don't want. Um, a woman wrote in, uh, I think it was about last week, a woman wrote in and said, you know, here's the problem that I have with, with dating in the middle of life right now is that I'm not really interested in sex. I really don't, you know, that's really not a part of my life that's important to me right now. She's more interested in companionship. She's more interested in having someone to do things with. And she's, in, in, you know, interested in having, a, you know, a new person in her life to share things with, but she's really not all that interested in sex. Now, here's what I would say. You know, there are many, I'm not a sex therapist, please, calling Dr. Laura Berman for this one and for all other questions about sex. Dr. Laura is my go-to person. I love her so much. Um so I don't, I, I, I'm not going to touch that one. I don't know how to, how to give anyone advice about their, their sexual, their level of sexual desire. But I would say that having really frank and open conversations about, about your age, how old you want to date in terms of how, how young the guy is, if he's much younger than you and you're worried about it, you know, one of the conversations that you might want to be really frank about is, you know, I'm not really interested in having sex as much as, you know, maybe you are. And so that might be um, a red flag for somebody younger, a younger man wanting to date you because he might really, you know, be of that mindset that he really, that sex is really important to him. So that's what I mean. You know, be on the same page, be honest about what you're looking for, be honest about who you are, no matter what age you are or what age he is. But especially when it comes to dating younger, younger men, I think that just, you know, keeping those lines of communication open, really important. Here's another thing about dating younger men, depending how old he is, he might be looking for, to, you know, to settle down, to have, to even, you know, if not start a family with you, then maybe he's really excited about the fact that you have children, even if they're grown children. I was, I dated a man once, this is when I was still living in Chicago. I, and my kids were young. They were younger. They were, you know, under 10. And he, this guy, his name was Dino, and he was 11 years younger than I was. And, you know, very sweet guy, extremely lovely person and thought Alex and Olivia, my kids were just the bee's knees, really, really liked hanging out with the three of us. Well, you know, in the course of our, of our, romance, which lasted about eight months, what I really came to realize is, is that what was attractive to Dino was the family unit. You know, he came from a kind of a chaotic family background. Um, there wasn't a lot of right, calm, lovely, hangout, you know, chill family time in his home and the home that, where he grew up. And so he was so attracted to, to that, to the vibe of, of being in a part of a family unit. Very sweet. But the what I did wrong in that relationship was I didn't have the kinds of conversations that I should have had with him, which would have looked like, hey, what are you really looking for right now? Um, what, where do you see this going? You know, what's, what is the, what, is there a future here? Because I wasn't thinking that this was a long-term or permanent relationship. I thought this was a really lovely, fun fling. Uh, with a much younger guy. And he was thinking more permanence. And so that was my mistake. I I didn't, I I didn't, you know, broach the subject. I didn't, I didn't say, hey, let's really talk about the fact that there is a, a fairly large age age discrepancy and not just you know, 11 years. It was also where I was in my life. Um, and you know, a, a single mom with kids and and where he was in his life, a guy who had never been married and he was probably looking to settle down, looking to have a family. So we didn't have that conversation. And and unfortunately, then the the relationship ended on kind of a sad note because we we just really weren't forthcoming and really weren't on, honest with each other about what we were each individually looking for. And so that is something that I would definitely recommend avoiding, right? That lack of communication, don't talk about it, never mention your ages, never mention that you're in different parts of, points in your life. No, there's no reason for that. If you're having a relationship with someone, 
there's no reason to not be completely uh, open to communication. Cards on the table. That is what I say about everything when it comes to being in a relationship, especially now in the middle of my life. And you're probably the same way. Uh, There is literally nothing I won't talk about. I will talk with my husband and with anybody, all my friends, about anything because I I don't have anything to hide. I am an open book and I I would much rather have the conversations, even if they're hard conversations, I would much rather have the conversations than sweep things under the rug because the things under the rug are going to find their way out and you're going to have to deal with them one day anyway. So, um, but yes, dating younger men, um, I think great. I think terrific. If if that's what you're if you're attracted to to a younger man and he's attracted to you and you both want the same things out of your relationship and you are enjoying each other, it's off to the races. Why not? And if you're worried about I'm just trying to I'm I'm thinking in my mind what what people might be worried about when it comes to dating younger men. Um certainly men are never burdened with worry about dating younger women, right? Uh, yes, nobody worries about that for them. They are more than happy to date younger women. But I, I think that one of the reasons that women in the middle of life might be a little concerned about dating younger men is because they're worried what other people might think. So you can probably guess what I'm going to say about that. But but I understand. Sometimes, and it's easy to say, you shouldn't care what anybody thinks. That's that's a very easy thing to say. And it's a harder thing to do sometimes. Maybe you're concerned about what your adult children will think. Maybe you're concerned about what your best friends will, will think. Um, maybe you are you belong to like a really vibrant group of couples and it would feel weird bringing a guy much younger than anybody else around. You know, so there are reasons that that you might feel some trepidation about about dating somebody younger and and incorporating him into your life. So I don't want to discount that. But all I will say is this, is that I think that in our minds, we make a much bigger deal about other people's opinions than actually exist. In other words, the anticipation of what are my friends going to say? What are my kids going to say? What is so-and-so going to say? What are they going to think? The anticipation of that is much bigger than the actuality of it. Because the truth is, and we all know this, most people are mostly concerned about what they are doing in their life, what's going on for them. They are not sitting around wondering who you're going to date and how old that person might be or young that person might be and if it's appropriate or not. And what is she thinking? You know, no, I I, I really, I, I, I'm a firm believer in our imaginations run wild when it comes to worrying about other people's opinions about anything we're doing in life. And that includes who we're dating. So if you're worried about some kind of a stigma, a social stigma around dating younger men, I say, throw that out the window because no one's going to care. And you shouldn't ever curtail what you want. You know, Stop yourself from getting what you want based on what other people may or may not think. If you really want to date somebody who's a lot younger than you, and maybe it's the first time you've ever done something like that, and it feels uncomfortable and it feels a little weird, you know, give yourself some space to grow into it. Give yourself a, a minute to get to get comfortable with it. And soon enough, it might seem like second nature. And if And if the person is right for you, the truth is, then that relationship is going to blossom regardless of how old he is and regardless of how old you are. Now, here is one little story, a little caveat I will add to all this. If you are dating younger men, so I've said all the good things, right? I've given all the positive feedback about that and all the reasons it should be a delightful joy ride if you, if you want to date someone younger. Here's one little tiny little caveat that I will give you. So there's this thing right now. <laughs> it's not right now. It's probably been going on for a long time, but I just heard about it. So for me, it's right now. Um, and a woman I know who's dating online told me about this, is that sometimes on on, on, on uh, profiles, and it's mostly men, I would say it's probably vast, the vast majority is men. They'll put a little acronym on their profile and the acronym is E-N-M. And I found out that this stands for ethical non-monogamy. Ethical non-monogamy, which means 
that they probably have a girlfriend or they, you know, some kind of a significant other, but they want to be quote unquote ethically non-monogamous. So listen, not to date myself, but in my day and age, that was called having something on the side. Um, So if you're going to date younger people, I just want you to be aware that there's some of this tomfoolery going on out there, ethical non-monogamy. And, and, and hey, if, if you're into that, then that's great. And please, please enjoy, please enjoy whatever. But I'm just, I'm just putting it out there because as a midlife woman, myself, a woman who's in her fifties, that was very surprising to me. I had never heard of that before. And it seemed like something that I would have stumbled into not knowing what was going on. And I would probably never have even thought to wonder what ENM stood for. And then I would have been caught unawares. And so that is probably not something that that you're going to enjoy. I remember once, I'll tell you another story. And this is another dating story from Chicago. I was dating a guy named Jonathan. And we had been dating for, I'm going to say like three months. And it was the point at which he was, I was getting ready to introduce him to my children, right? Because we were dating and I had met, I, and, and I think our fourth or fifth date, uh, he invited me out to go to dinner with his brother and sister-in-law, this delightful married couple. And we went out to dinner and we had the greatest time. And then we all went out and listened to some live music. And I thought, okay, well, this is nice. You know, he's introducing me to his family. How this is lovely. And and we we saw each other a lot. We saw each other, I say, you know, three times a week. And and I, like I said, I was getting ready to introduce him to my to my kids. And he was actually uh, talking to me about, you know, I was planning to buy something for my son for his birthday. Um it was a lizard. I, I won't bother you with that story. It was a blue tongue stink skink. It was this crazy present that, you know, Alex really wanted a lizard. So anyway, he was helping me. Jonathan was helping me and and finding out where I could buy this thing and et cetera. And so I thought, well, this is my boyfriend, right? Like, wouldn't you think that? Wouldn't you say, okay, well, here, this guy is my boyfriend. He's introduced me to his family. We've been dating for a, a, a while. He wants to meet my kids. He's helping me buy a Chris, a birthday present for one of my children. This is my boyfriend. And so one day we were talking and he lets out this little tidbit of information that he is seeing three or four other women currently at the same time that we were dating. And I looked at him and I said, three or four other women right now, you're, you're seeing three or four other women now. And he goes, yeah. And I'm like, well, is it three or four? I mean, can I get a head count? How many women are there? And he said, well, listen, you know, I'm a, however old he was, I'm a 34 year old single man. I mean, this is, this is what I'm doing. I'm dating, you know, this is what I choose to do. So, so in other words, what you're telling me is you're sleeping with three or four, we don't know, three or four other women at the same time that you're seeing me. Yes, 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 yes. That was the truth. And I mean, the the joy and happiness just got sucked right out of the room. I can't tell you what, what a feeling that was. It just took me by surprise, shocked. And because here I thought, I, I assumed that we were monogamous and I assumed that he was my boyfriend, which leads me to another note. And I'll talk about this in another podcast. Ask the question, are you seeing other people? Do you have a girlfriend? As crazy as that seems, you do have to ask the question because you, you can't make an assumption. I did. And I got completely burned. I mean, completely shocked. So of course I broke up with him immediately, like on the spot. I think I said, get your stuff and get out. It was one of those very dramatic breakups. And he was so shocked. And I'll tell you what I was really mad about. I had loaned him a book about a month earlier, this fabulous book. And, um, oh, and he still had the copy of it and it was a hard copy. And I was so mad about it. And, and I never did get it back. But then very recently, my darling daughter found that book and bought it for me for, it was either Christmas or my birthday because she's so thoughtful. And I think I told her part of the story, maybe not the whole story, but I told her part of it. I told her that I had loaned a book to a guy and never got it back. And so she found it. I think it was out of print and she finally found it. Anyway, in the show notes, I'll put the name of the book because I can't think of it off the top of my head. 
This is my story. This is my offering to you about dating younger men. Oh, and Jonathan was younger than me by, I'm going to say like eight years. So just be aware, ethical non-monogamy, if you see that acronym in someone's profile, it means that's what it means, ENM. It means they're seeing other people and maybe they even have a whole girlfriend. They might have, they might be living with someone for all you know. And maybe she knows about the ENM and maybe she doesn't, you know, we don't know. So just be aware of that and, and do ask the question and do have a really open line of communication when you're dating someone younger and when you're dating anyone. But I'm just saying it, it's a good idea to get on the same page, to get firmly on the same page so that everybody knows the score and expectations are agreed upon and then you can relax and have fun with it. And that is what I have to say about that. Okay, thank you for listening. This has been Finding Love with Nancy Bruce, and I will see you guys next week.